Prima Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Water and Sanitation Minister Namvula Mokanyane has officially visited the Eastern Basin Acid Mine Drainage Treatment Plant in Springs, where she heaped high praise on the facility and its operators. Elan Solomons was there and filed this report. Speaking during a visit to the plant last month, the minister highlighted that the plant formed an integral part of the Department of Water and Sanitation's 12 billion rand long-term plan to combat the risks posed by acid mine drainage. The opening of a third high-density sludge treatment plant in Gauteng was not only addressing the challenge of acid mine drainage, but also constituted one of a critical number of ways the government sought to ensure the continued supply of water to the province, said Mokonyane. The challenge brought about by the acid mine drainage has existed for centuries since the discovery of gold and the commencement of commercial mining operations here in the reef. Due to the scale of mining in the last century, it has been determined that the impact of the mines on the water resources and the resultant challenges of AMD cannot be avoided and left unattended. More so, given the socio-economic impact of these basins and the potential we have to unlock significant flows of water that could contribute to the water mix of South Africa. There are three main basins in the Witwatersrand Rand Goldfields, namely the Western Basin, the Central Basin launched and running, and the Eastern Basin here in Springs, which we are here to launch today. Over the last six years, working through TCTA, we have successfully initiated and implemented successful short-term interventions in the three basins, which have paved the, the way for the long-term solutions we are now launching and implementing. Excellent progress has been made to date on the implementation of the short-term interventions across the three basins within the Wheat Waters Rand area. Eastern Basin Acid Mine Drainage Treatment Plant Manager Rulof van Veik elaborates on the important role the plant is playing in preventing negative environmental events occurring in the region. Currently, the plant's got a full capacity of treating 110 megalitres of AMD per day. We are currently running at 85% of that capacity, which is roughly 94 megalitres per day. We are dropping the shaft level by 30 millimetres per day. If the shaft pumps are not working and the plant is off, the water level is rising by 600 millimetres per day, especially during the rainy season. So the importance of this plant constantly running, that's basically, it can be deducted from the 600 millimetre rise per day. It will take us 20 days to, to make up one day of, of lost production on the plant. We are currently at roughly 115 meters below surface, the water level. The critical limit is in the region of 108 meters. Then water will start to decant in the lower, lower surrounding areas. Our aim is to get the water level to 120 meters below surface. We would expect to reach that by June, more or less. Van Beek further unpacks the core components that make up the plant which services a surface area of about 768 square kilometers. The main functioning parts would be the um, shaft abstraction pumps, which were supplied by Ritz. So you have the free submersible pumps. Then you have the lime system where we make up lime. It's got a capacity to make up 100, of, 100 tons of lime per day. Currently we are only using 35 tons of lime per day. Then we have the reactor area where the physical reaction between the chemicals and the AMD is taking place. Then we have the thickness area where we are separating the sludge from the clean water. We have polymer dosing that's also being added in the thickness. And that's basically the main components of the plant. You have the shaft, shaft extraction pumps, chemical preparation system, namely the lime. You have the reactors, the thickness and the polymer dosing. Van Veik notes that the plant, which is operated by industrial water treatment company Chikrofia Thunder Manzi, under the auspices of the state-owned water management and project implementation body, the Trans-Caledonian Tunnel Authority, is producing treated water that is improving the quality of the water that is being transferred into the Val River system. The water is actually of a fairly good quality that, that's being pumped out. If we compare to Central Basin, for example, they have an iron content of in the region of 800 to 900 milligrams per litre, where we are only pumping out in extreme cases 180 milligrams per litre but 
normally we are in the region of 100 milligrams per liter. We are reducing that down to less than one milligram per liter. Basically all traces of aluminium is being removed and all traces of magnesium. Uranium is being tested on a bi-weekly basis at an external lab and we have not picked up traces of uranium. Other news making headlines this week, Ikurileni launches new 8.9 billion rand housing settlement in Boxburg. JSC results show strong investment appetites remains and difficult trading conditions dull Clovis H1 financial performance. A new 8.9 billion rand housing development project on the East Rand of Gauteng is set to provide 22,000 houses over the next seven years. The vision really of this project is to change the landscape of Eguruleni, change the, lanes, the landscape of Boxbeck. It will become a place where dreams of families are born, where families can prosper and grow within a safe, quality and empowering environment. We are creating an environment where um, people can work, stay and play. Luport will accommodate the total spectrum of housing needs from families within limited resources who will be integrated in this high quality suburb to families with the ability to migrate into the bonded housing market. Investor appetites in South Africa remains robust, despite the country having navigated a particularly noisy socio-economic environment during 2016. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see a, a, a cap, but listings are a function of people's appetite and understanding of the ecosystem and the environment in which they're going to list. And so if that environment is stormy or low growth, it's often an, uh, an early indicator that people will be a little bit more cautious about coming to list. But if you take for a moment uh, a look at our listings last year, we had some really enormous listings. We had AB InBev, we had Hammerson, one of the world's largest property companies list here. I think it's really good for the market. Um, we've got some nice listings in the pipeline this year. Let's see if they actually come. Um, I really, we're doing what we can to encourage them. If you take a, a, a look at the delistings, 25 delistings, about half of them were companies that didn't meet our requirements, but the other half were really corporate actions that fed into various different other listings, the likes of SA breweries um, rolling into AB InBev or the collapse of the Pickwick pyramid structure on, on, on pick and pay. So, so quite normal corporate actions. It's not quite uh, a, the dire position that you might think 25 listings is a technical uh, term, a delisting. As Clover Industries works its way through muted trading and economic conditions, the JSC listed group is progressing a number of strategies to set it back on a growth path. Yeah, um, we were fortunate that I've got a very um, sympathetic board. You know, with all these input costs that you have, it's very difficult to have a long-term view. Uh, we've been managing, despite that, to increase our R&D uh, by 20, more than 20% to about 30 million. Um, part of that was when necessary to, to reformulate many of our products which got, contain sugar. So that was a very important element. But also we launched a number of new products, still despite the fact that we're in this tough economic conditions. The second highlight for me was that we managed to consolidate our city deep um, operations, distribution uh, the, 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 the facilities into our Clayville facility, which was quite a bit of an engineering uh, challenge for us. You know, you work with fresh products and you have to uh, move a factory over a weekend, so that was quite uh, interesting. But uh, uh, all in all, I think balanced approach, uh, high price increases, uh, lost a little bit of market share in some instances. So I think the challenge going forward is to try and, and rectify some of those uh, market share losses. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.